ready to make a difference in the lives of fathers and their families? The Show Up Dad podcast empowers the next generation of dads to lead with confidence and love. Your support and our amazing partners help us to create lasting impact. Consider donating 50, 100, or 250 to provide a dad with essential resources. And speaking of incredible partners, let us introduce you to Tallman Equipment. Since 1952, Tallman Equipment has been standing taller than the rest of competition in lineman tools. They provide top quality equipment and solutions for linemen, ensuring safety and efficiency on the job. If you're in need of reliable and durable tools, look no further than Tallman Equipment. Also, don't forget to check out our online shop at theshowupshop.myshopify.com for high quality products that support our cause. From t-shirts and hoodies, stickers, and even children's clothes, we have something for everyone. Not only will we be showing your support for our cause, but you'll also be getting a high quality product that you'll love. To learn more about what we do, visit theshowupdadfoundation.org. You can also find Lyman tools at tallmanequipment.com. Thank you for your generosity, and let's empower dads and build stronger families. Welcome to Marriage on the Line, the podcast where we explore the challenges, triumphs, and lessons learned in the journey of marriage. I'm your host, David Mendonca, and I'm joined today by my wonderful wife, Jenny. Welcome, Jenny. Hi. So today we're going to be talking about discipline and how it's written in the heart of a child. They actually want it. They crave it. And when they don't receive it, they feel unloved. So we're going to talk about hypocrisy and what we can do to not breed that in them or show them hypocrisy and how that breeds rebellion as well within them. So, yeah, we're definitely going to hit on how hypocrisy breeds rebellion in a family dynamic. Uh, This is something that doesn't only just affect children, Uh, But it also affects your marriage as well. So if you are living as a hypocrite where your words and actions do not line up together, you're telling your family that they need to do this, this, and this, but you also live a double standard and you participate in those things, you're going to cause a dynamic in your family that really is very rebellious and uh, chaotic. Mm Mm-hmm. So basically, when we discipline our children, we got to do it first by our examples, correct? Yeah. If you've ever heard um, Jimmy Evans, he has said, whatever you allow in your own life Mm -hmm. and in your own family, like the things that you yourself as a parent participate in, you're basically saying that's okay for your kids to do as well. So if you're at home you know, and you're drinking all night and whatever else, don't be surprised when your kids decide to drink, even though you've told them not to drink. And it also can extend into, you know, if you're treating your wife horrible and you have daughters that are watching, like you're hitting your wife or, you know, just speaking horrible to her, do not be surprised when your girls go and find a man that acts similar, even though you've said, you know, otherwise, otherwise. And most likely, you know, that's when you start really having rebellious problems is when your kids are teenagers. Mm, mm. So it starts very young, right? With yeah. The training, yeah. right? So let's go ahead and talk about what discipline truly is, because a lot of people I know think discipline is spanking your child. Right. And that's not the case at all. Discipline actually comes from the Greek word training to train somebody. Mm -hmm. And I love this analogy. I heard it once said from a a man much wiser than me, that when we train up our kids, it's no different than having a sapling growing in your backyard. It's growing at a 45 degree. It's growing crooked. Mm -hmm. If we were to go out there and try to correct it and apply pressure too soon, too fast, Mm -hmm. it was, it would snap that sapling, right? Mm-hmm. So what we need to do as fathers, as, as mothers, is to apply gentle pressure over time so it starts straightening itself out in the direction it needs to grow. Mm-hmm. So that is a perfect example of what discipline is. It is training. Mm-hmm. And I, I think a lot of times, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, babe, but a, a lot of times as parents, we take the training, the discipline that we're giving them and when a kid misbehaves, 
we take that as an offense and we get so upset. And then that's where the hypocrisy lies because we're telling them, don't yell at your brother, uh, respect your brothers and sisters or whatever. But then we're so offended by what they did. Then we start re reacting to them in a way that's undesirable too. And they're looking at us like, you told me not to yell at my brother, but yeah, you're yelling at me. Mm -hmm. And that's where the hypocrisy lies, right? Yeah, definitely. Same thing with, you know, hitting. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> don't hit your brother. Don't hit your sister. But then I'm going to spank you out of anger. That's not, definitely not the way the that message. you should do things. Um, I think one thing that's really important about discipline is, you know, just understanding that discipline and training, those words need to be used interchangeably. Um, and if you have like a negative tie towards the word discipline, maybe you should start using the word training instead. Like, oh, my kid needs training. They don't need punishment. Mm -hmm. They're, they are going to need training. Now, if they don't adhere to their training, that's when you go in with a little bit of pain and their life ends where you take away devices or whatever you need to do, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, in some cases, spanking, but spanking, there's some very specific rules around when that's appropriate. You should never hit out of anger yeah, or beat a child. It should never leave bruises or marks or, you know, these types of things. Those are those are really scary things. And I think it's also age appropriate, too. I'm definitely not going to try to spank my daughter who's 17. Yeah. And it's it should never be a shaming thing situation where Explain. you take their pants you pull their pants down in front of family members mm -hmm. and you you know spank their bare bottom or you know what i mean things like that some people just really take things to a level that is very inappropriate and very damaging and it no longer is in the realm of training your child and helping your child now it's become something where you're abusing your child or ripping them down yeah, it becomes more of a corporate punishment, right? Yeah, Cor yeah, corporal punishment. Um, so just a few words on that, uh, because you know the Bible does talk about those types of things, mm -hmm. and so and sometimes and a lot of churches don't teach it correctly. No, a lot of churches teach that uh, discipline is spanking. Yes, yeah, spare the rod, spoil the child. They say right, right. Yeah. And in that case, they don't understand that the actual root word for rod is your authority in that home. As parents, as fathers, as mothers, you have a level of authority God given to you. Mm -hmm. And you need to exercise that authority over your children. Mm -hmm. You know, and it takes practice. Just like your children are in training, guess what? You're in training as well. Yes. Parenting is extremely triggering. <laughs> explain it's extremely triggering and i didn't really understand that was the reason why i would get so upset mm -hmm. in certain situations especially around the way you would parent and i would have to witness it yeah uh that would really trigger me and that affected our marriage so like even parenting styles can can really affect a marriage mm -hmm. uh, and so it's really important to get on the same page with your spouse but anyway the, the ways that parenting can be very triggering is that really parenting is more about learning how to behave yourself as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got to be the adult, right? <laughs> right. And I mean, we laugh about that, but the, it's true. I mean, when your child is acting crazy in the store, uh, a lot of the time we feel shame because we're thinking to ourselves, oh my gosh, what is everybody thinking about my kid and how does that reflect upon me? Mm -hmm. And so then we'll go to any length to make them stop. And sometimes those things are with threats. Uh, sometimes it's with, you know, coddling yeah. the kid. Coddling, yeah. Basically just giving them, giving into them of what they want. Uh, and then they learn nothing about, you know, real life because consequences and real consequences of their actions and things like that. And so, uh, you know, a lot of it is really parenting is more about learning how to be 
a, a healthy individual and how to deal with stress and triggers. <laughs> well, think about how damaging that is. Your kid's freaking out, having a conniption fit over a toy. You tell them no. You're ashamed. You're triggered. You're freaking personalizing it. Like I said before, what are they going to think about me? Right. Mm -hmm. And my parenting skills. So then you give into that kid. So now that kid learns something that he should have never learned. That is, if I act like this, mm -hmm. this certain way, I get rewarded. I get rewarded. Yes. Right. Yeah. And that is so damaging. Imagine when they become teenagers and they want that uh, Maserati or whatever, you know what yeah. I mean? And you don't want to give it to them. So what do they do? They take your vehicle and drive it into the, to, you yeah. know, the, parking structure or whatever you know what i'm saying it's it's super critical that we get these things under control at a, at a young age yeah and it really teaches our children accountability mm. for your own actions uh, i've been hearing a lot of stories and tiktoks of teachers nowadays and they're really terrified of the children that are being brought up in today's society because they say that most kids right now don't have any sense of self-accountability. And so that's why training and discipline is extremely important because we're really trying to raise, you know, competent adults in the future and not damage them, you know, further. Yeah, for sure. And it's crazy too. Like some of the main questions I get asked all the time is like, how did we get here and how do we get ourselves out of it? Mm -hmm. You know, and I consistently say the same thing over and over again. We didn't get here overnight. And it's not going to be fixed overnight. No, but it can start today. You can make a change Absolutely. today. And a big part of the problems that we're seeing right now, and if you're struggling with a teenager that's really rebellious and doesn't want to listen to you and stuff like that, you need to examine your own life and really look for any roots of hypocrisy. If you're being a hypocrite where your words and your actions do not line up, then, uh, those are those are the root causes of of why your kid is rebelling against you so within that family dynamic right and we're talking about hypocrisy right and the effects of that right mm -hmm. How, so it affects them in several ways right so the first one is going to be loss of trust yeah right so when children witness hypocrisy where there is a disconnect between what is preached and what is practiced as my wife was saying they begin to lose trust in their parents and their faith. If parents say one thing, but do another thing, it creates that confusion and inconsistency that they really need. And it leads to a breakdown in trust within the family dynamic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You can also see that when parents favor one kid over the other, Ooh. or like if you have a strong-willed child and punishments or disciplines mm -hmm. are more extreme for that kid because they've been acting up a little bit more than the other kids. Mm -hmm. uh, but when the other kid does the same thing, their punishment or discipline isn't as bad, you know, that will definitely breed rebellion that will breed, you know, contempt towards their siblings, mm -hmm. things like that. So you really have to have a parental plan mm -hmm. on how you are going to discipline your children, train your children, basically train. We're, we're here. Our job is to train our children to grow up and be good adults. It's no different than if you are a trainer at a job mm -hmm. and you have a new employee and they don't know the skills that it, they need mm -hmm. in order to, you know, work this new system that they have or whatever. You have to put them through a training course, right? And mm -hmm. you have to teach them all the intricacies of that new position. Well, we have to do that with our kids and it doesn't stop at a certain age. No, it doesn't stop when they can walk or talk. And I think like you said, you said it perfectly, babe. Um, you got to have parameters, right? Because if they don't know what to work in, even at work, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have parameters set up, how do you know when you're not in the lines? You don't know. You, don't you know. need boundaries. And yeah. And it really creates hypocrisy in a family dynamic when parents are just making it up off the off their head. Yeah, as they're going, right? Yeah, so we definitely recommend that parents get together. They discuss 
you know, what is allowed in their home, what is not allowed in their home, write it down so the rules can be seen amongst your children and introduce those rules to your kids. Mm -hmm. Give them a grace period of like a week and say, okay, these are the rules. We don't expect you to be perfect this first week, but you know, when you do mess up, you're going to get a couple chances this first week. Well, let's give some examples of rules, right? What did we yeah. implement in our own home? We implemented, you know, to be respectful to each other. Mm. And in that, that means we're not calling each other names. We're not hitting each other. We're not doing things that are really awful, like taking people's toys and breaking them or even respecting the home is one of the things. Mm -hmm. Making sure that you are staying in the kitchen when you eat food. You're not going upstairs with your shoes, you know, things like that. Respecting your mother and father. Respecting your mother and father. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just things that make people a good person and, you know, easy to live with. But it goes for everybody. Like, we need to be respectful to them, too. Mm -hmm. We can't be telling them, be respectful to your brother and your sister. And then we're talking to them horrible. Exactly. That's where that hypocrisy comes in. Right. Involved, right. And just like, we can't be eating in the living room. <laughs> when we're watching why are you TV, looking at me <laughs> i'm just saying when we're watching tv even though i'm tempted Excuse to i mean i find myself every once in a while like with a you know bag of chips or something and i'm like oh this is a great movie let me sit down and you know the kids will see it and they'll be like ah uh, you yeah, can't they be doing definitely that will call you out on that yes oh man yes and if your kids are calling you out and you get angry about it you need some work too. You need some training. <laughs> <laughs> you need training, right? And, and that's the thing, guys. You know, we, we're sounding real lighthearted on the show and everything because that's what it's about, you know. Um, but this is some serious stuff. It really is. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to like it when they become adolescents and they're sneaking out of your house and doing awful things. You're not going to like it when you're getting that call at two in the morning saying you're going to come pick up your kid. Yeah. And the very worst, you're not going to like it when they say you need to come get your kid. They've been in a major accident or, mm -hmm. or worse. Mm -hmm. Right. So we need to put this in play. You know, one of the big things I always tell uh, the people I train is that our actions, right, lead to bigger problems. And I use the example of dropping a pebble in a pond, you know. Those rings go out and they grow and they grow and they grow and they grow and they grow. We don't know where they're going to go. It could turn into a tsunami 500 miles away, right? So we don't know the implications of what our actions are that day. So when we negate our role to implement this structure that our family craves and needs, or we misrepresent it through obedience or disobedience on our, our own behalf, right? There's going to be a consequence to that. And we're trying to get you guys boomed up so you don't have to go through that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? Definitely. Yeah. And honestly, if <clears throat> if your kids are really driving you nuts, you need to take a good look at yourself and ask mm. yourself, what in the world do I need to work on that, you know, they are really triggering in me? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So like. I don't know. There's just so many things. I know for me, I was really triggered this past summer. My daughter mm -hmm. uh, was trying out for varsity for a team. And she was told that she wasn't good enough or not good enough. She just told she wasn't that she wasn't going to make varsity. And uh, yeah, I got really triggered because I went through an experience where my senior year, well, my junior year, I played on varsity. My senior year, we got a new coach. I tried out and was the only person that did not make varsity and was told that I was not allowed to play on any team because I was a senior. And my daughter went through the same thing. She was the only senior that was told she wasn't going to be, you know, on a team. Mm. Uh, and then they decided to keep her on a team, which was great, but I was extremely triggered. Yeah, you were. Oh, I was extremely triggered because I, in my situation, I didn't get to play yeah. at all. And I would have gladly taken a JV position mm. just to play because I love to play. But 
for her, she actually was given a position on a team, but we didn't know that she was going to be. And in those couple of days of waiting, I, I was a wreck. I was an absolute <laughs> wreck. And that can cause you to actually lash out at coaches. Yeah. It can cause you to go and make a fool of yourself because you're triggered of what's happening to your kid. And their story is not the same as yours. Exactly. And that's why I talked about not personalizing. Yeah. You know, because when we do personalize like that, man, it just creates a whole different atmosphere. It's not about them. It's not about us at that moment. It's about them and what they're yeah. going through. And we need to keep that in perspective. Yeah. And sure. you have to just continue to, you know, remind yourself to walk in integrity and mm-hmm. hold on to your morals, even in the moments of being triggered. Oh, yeah. I know, like, even in our marriage, the way that you parent our daughter mm-hmm. compared to the, the way you parent our sons triggers me way more. I like, because I was a daughter at one point in time. Mm-hmm. And so it like, oh, I can't even handle it sometimes. Praise God. There's always second chances. Yeah. <laughs> and then I like will lash out at you. Yeah. Which that really, you know, disrupts our marriage situation. Mm-hmm. No, for sure. But it's because we never had a plan. No. Of mar- We were never on the same page. We never sat down and said, this is how we're going to parent. This is what we're going to stick to. Well, we never were taught, you know, not until recently where we started to look at ourselves and look and see what we were doing wrong and start implementing these new procedures into our lives and, and seeing the fruit of that, right? Mm-hmm. Principles that have been written down in the Bible. It's, it's you know... I used to say, and I'm guilty of this, I used to say, man, we were never given a blueprint. But after careful evaluation of God's word and and looking through and having somebody go through it with me and training me and showing me, man, it's all there. Everything, the way to be a father, the way to be a husband, way to be a good employer, everything, a good wife, everything. It's all laid out before us. We just got to look for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah, definitely. And if anybody's interested in some parenting books, please reach out to us. We have some free parenting books on how to implement this style of parenting where you are training your children and you are analyzing yourself. And it just, man, we've been going through the books with our mentor. Mm -hmm. And I can honestly say that it's completely changed not only our family dynamic, but it's changed our marriage. Yeah, for sure. In a huge way. And man, the way that differing parenting styles can affect a marriage in a negative way is unbelievable because I would do things that would undermine you because I felt guilty, you know, for the kids. And that made you feel disrespected. Absolutely. And it wasn't until I understood through God's word that our wives were created different from us. They actually carry the sensitive part within them to be able to fill the hearts of our children. I never understood that. I knew that. And my wife never understood that and knew that when I could not feel what the children were feeling, like they were feeling sick or whatever. To me, it's like, okay, get over it. I know you're feeling sick, but we still got work to do, (laughs) right? Whereas you were the nurturer because that's something that God gave women to have, to be the nurturers, right? And you're able to be like, look, no, they're not feeling good. And then point that out. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I realized that God gave you that gift, something I didn't have. Mm -hmm. We're two incomplete people that God put together and you're here to complete me and I'm here to complete you. Mm -hmm. And working together in that dynamic has really changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely really changed a lot. So it's been good. It's been really good. Yeah, for sure. We've seen huge changes in our kids too. Like Nakota is excelling in this incredible way now. Like, Mm -hmm. and we see that I feel like our children have more self-confidence and they also, when you're a parent that chooses to discipline and you both are on the same page but you, you are training your children in a righteous kind of way, uh, your kids will feel more loved. Yes. Instead of, you know, even though sometimes they'll say, oh, I hate you in this moment or whatever, <laughs> because they don't like the actual the act of, yeah. of being corrected, but they will feel more loved because 
their parents care about them and want them to do well. I grew up in a home where I was kind of left to my own devices and, you know, didn't really have somebody looking out for me or wanting me to do well and great in my grades and things like that. And to be honest, like I really felt like nobody cared for me. Yeah. And so, you know, I would have loved to have somebody that trained me how to become an adult. Yeah. It's crazy that we got together because you grew up on that aspect, totally opposite end of the spectrum for me. Whereas I had the discipline, I had the structure, but there was no love, mm -hmm. right? It was very, very rigid, very, very cold, very, you're going to do this. Militant. And if you don't, there's going to be hell to pay, mm -hmm. you know, and no disrespect to my father, my mother, they gave me what they thought I needed versus what a child deserves, you know, because what I mean by that is our children deserve a certain level of love, compassion, discipline, and training, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they need. And when that's not followed up like that, if, it, if there's too much uh, discipline, too much training and no love, what good is that? Well, it leaves, it's not balanced. it leaves a hole inside of yeah. them because as parents, we have a debt to pay to our kids. Mm. Um, and whether we pay that debt or not, uh, you know, we either fulfill it for them in their lives and then they grow up to be fulfilled in that area because we are required to fulfill a debt mm -hmm. for them. But if we don't fulfill it, they're going to have an empty hole inside of them and they're not going to know how to fill that. That can't be filled by anybody else. No. So when you say required, just so our audience knows to fill to, for that debt, right? Mm -hmm. Where does that come from? From God. <laughs> from God, right? He, yeah. That's, that's something he placed in, inside our children, right? Yeah. The feeling that our children need mm -hmm. of that void, right? Yeah. And it's only something that parents, because we have so much influence in their lives, can fill. Right. And even if you don't agree with that perspective, just search your own heart and think of all the things that your parents did not fulfill for you and the void it left for you. Mm. It's just like a universal spiritual truth inside of our own bodies. You know what I mean? And everybody fills it. Everybody deals with it um, at, to some degree because not everybody's parents are perfect. No. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely something that your children will fill. Mm. I want to talk to you a little bit more about, uh, you said something about, uh, double standards, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, when children see their parents acting or setting different standards for certain children, right? Whether it be the baby, the middle child, or even the, uh, oldest child, right? Mm -hmm. When we set those standards and they start comparing each other it can breed resentment and rebellion, right? Because mm -hmm. there's an inconsistency there. Mm -hmm. And the children can feel unfairly treated, leading them to question even the validity of their own rules and guidelines by their parents set, set by us, right? Mm -hmm. um, have you seen that? I, I mean, I, I know I've seen that with our baby. I know with Nakota, because we raised her Different. not in this way. Yeah. We raised her very differently and, and you know... The only way we knew how based off our own wounding mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and stuff like that. And then now that we've been implementing this other type of parenting, there was some confusion with her where she was upset that the boys weren't receiving the same kind of punishments she did Yeah, at, at their age. Uh, and so we really had to come forth and talk to her and, you know, apologize and tell her how wrong we were and that we didn't know and that we really want to make it right um, by, you know, fixing our behavior now mm -hmm. and parenting in a better way now. And I've noticed for her, there's a lot less, she's more lovey-dovey with her brothers now. She's yeah. not picking on them. Before, yeah, she used to pick on them. She used to pick on them because, you know, we bred that contempt Mm -hmm. in the merit uh, in the in the family <laughs> dynamic by not knowing what we were doing no for sure you know we a lot of times as parents you know the first child one of the, the biggest misconceptions they say is well our first child is training for us and then after that we learn what not to do yeah you know it's like a a proving ground with that first child right yeah yep 
and that leads to resentment as well. So one of the things we have to do, because it's never too late, is to walk in humility, practice that humility, show them that humility by saying we're sorry. Yep. And not necessarily sorry. I don't even like that word, sorry. But asking for forgiveness. Yeah. Right? Because you could say sorry a thousand times. It doesn't mean anything if there's no heart change. I think the right word is repent. And I know a lot of people tie yes. that to like religious. Christianity and religious, but <laughs> repent means to turn away mm -hmm. from your bad nature. Yeah. And the so, direction you're going. Yeah. The direction that you're going is to turn away and, and go the right direction. And so I really think that's important to go and be humble and mm -hmm. repent. You know what I mean? And say, you know what? I am sorry but I'm turning away from those bad practices and I'm making better decisions. Better decisions. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So we talked about loss of trust, double standards. Another way is lack of authenticity. Okay. That's uh, what we mean by that is children are perceptive, right? They watch everything. They can sense when we're BSing them, everything. They know when our parents are not being genuine etc etc okay so when we as parents put on this facade of righteousness like we go to church for example and five minutes before that we're yelling at each other saying you better get in the car i'm going to pull your hair out or whatever it may be right and then we get to church and we're like oh my god praise the lord hey brother hey sister how you doing or even on social media we're acting a certain way or whatever right this is exhibiting this hypocritical behavior you know, it, it's, it's confusing for them. Very confusing. And that's where you hear a lot of stories of kids growing up in very religious homes yes. and not wanting to be in that religion at all. It's because the family is not walking what they're talking. Mm, you yeah. know what I mean? And there's so many uh, big players out there. So many uh, young, beautiful singers that are out there that grew up in these religious homes that have totally walked away from the faith. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, it's sad. It's very sad. And that's not what we want. And I mean, even if you're not a religious person, mm -hmm. these practices work for everybody. You yeah. know, just being consistent, not being a hypocrite, making sure that your words and your actions line up and that what you're doing yourself you know what i mean because basically you're the example yeah kids have something called mirror well all of us we all have mirror neurons mm -hmm. but children really absorb it fast um in the first seven years that you are basically they're in a vibrational state in their brain called theta which is almost like a uh hypnosis where they're just absorbing everything that you're doing in front of them and that's how they learn how to walk and talk because we never pick up our babies and move their legs for them no. they they learn how to walk by watching us the way we do it and that's why a lot of our children will walk like us mm -hmm. like if you walk with a swagger or whatever sometimes your kids will pick that up mm -hmm. anyway uh so these mirror neurons just are, you know, mirroring everything they're seeing. So if your actions are not in line with what you're saying. Ugh. Yeah, that could lead and to. And then you're going to see this kid that mirrors you and you're going to be bugged. Yes. No, so let's, let's go into that <laughs> since we're talking about that. Because I know a lot of times there'll be certain things that I'll pick up in one of my child. I'll use my daughter, for example, because that's the. That's the one we did implement our, this new training yeah. development in them. Cause you know, we didn't know any better for lack of better words. Um, so my daughter, there'll be certain things that get under my skin that I notice she's doing and it'll drive me nuts. And then now I have to realize, okay, where did she learn that from? Where did she pick that up from? Mm -hmm. And I have to be like, oh, wow. Man, I'm picking that up. I'm noticing that because myself, I do that mm -hmm. and I don't like it. Mm -hmm. So now I need to make the changes <laughs> within myself. And that's the crazy part. That's God's sense of humor. He uses our children to flush out and bring forward the stuff that are in that is in us that he wants to change. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's really amazing because we think that 
we can go and isolate ourselves and then work on ourselves <laughs> and you can't like oh. the only way that you that the flaws inside ourselves are revealed to us is through relationship mm. it's the only way and we will see it most closely with our spouse and our kids Absolutely. because that's where we go and we take our mask off you know a lot of people will wear a mask in the world uh, but then when you come home and you know, you kind of let your hair down and you become yourself, you know, that's not a good thing. And that's very confusing for kids. If you are this super charismatic person and you're so respected and kind to everybody that you work with and whatever else, and then you go home and you're like the worst version of yourself with your kids and your family. Oh, that's not a good look. No, that's hypocrisy at its finest right there. Yes. That's Wow. And then you can't be surprised when your kids don't want to have a relationship with you when you're older. Yeah, they have nothing to do with you. They're, you know, you're on your deathbed asking for them to come see because those are your only kids. And they turn around and say, nope, yeah, I don't want nothing to do with you. And it's sad because I say that because I've heard of stories like that. Yeah. Tons of stories like that. Yeah. You know, it's also interesting because we think also that during discipline, or training, we need to lecture. Oh, I'm guilty of that. <laughs> <laughs> you can be long-winded, oh, man. Oh. In the lecture mode for sure is, and I try to drive my point home. And this is this, and this, and this is the consequence, and this yeah. is this. And... But anyhow, back <laughs> to what you're saying. Lecturing is, uh, it's not beneficial. Your kids aren't listening to what you're saying. And it basically is just trying to drive home shame mm. for what they did. I think for me, I really wanted to drive, like you said, drive home that point to them mm -hmm. so they wouldn't do it again. And subconsciously, I felt like they weren't getting it. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Because in that moment, they weren't. Because number one, probably I was yelling at the time and you're not going to hear anything if your heart rate's over nine beats per minute, right? You mm -hmm. physically can't hear. So at that moment when I'm yelling at him, screaming at him and trying to drive home at this point, they're not listening to me. And then I get offended of it because I feel like, well, they're not listening to me. It's like, well, duh, dummy. Yeah. Of course not listening to you. You're yelling at him and you're lecturing, you know what I mean? Yep. So then I get offended and it just starts this big old crazy cycle, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, you can't, you can't train somebody to do something by yelling at them. I had a good friend of mine say that when you're yelling, you're just showing everyone that you yourself are confused. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. I think so. I think you're either confused or you're just uh, basically bugged that you're having to take time out of your time mm. to do it right. Because really training takes real discipline, real training. Um and raising your kids means that you need to sacrifice your own time. Mm. And a lot of parents get mad because they're scrolling and they want to look on their phone and the kid needs help Dying. with something. So they go and they decide to do it on their own and they're doing it wrong because kids don't know how to do things. And then all of a sudden the parents yelling, mm. but nobody took the time to show them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if your kid is hungry, so then they go and decide to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. But then there's jelly all over the counter because they don't know to use a spoon. They got a butter knife. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And they just made like a huge mess or they poured themselves some milk. The milk carton was too heavy and it overflowed and it went everywhere. Or they got in the cabinet to get a cup because they're trying to be independent and they dropped the glass on the floor. Well, then now mom or dad come in yelling yeah pissed instead of oh how can i help you what did you need honey yeah and the kid's confused the kid knows he's gonna get in trouble he knows he made a mistake and now we're reinforcing that he's not good enough by yelling at him that and then also now they're confused because they have needs yes children always Ooh. they're gonna always have needs and we're too selfish as parents to get off our butt and cater to our kids, not cater, but help them with what they need. That's a part or of teach them. Yes. 
And that's what falls back to what you said, what they're owed. Yes. Right? Yes. They're owed us. Like we we need to be there to train them in a nice way. Like yeah. the way you would with a new employee. You're not going to yell at your employee for freaking dropping. Some people something. do. Some people do. I used to. Some people do. But I mean, <laughs> <laughs> there, there are some horrible bosses out there and, you know. Uh, most people don't quit jobs, they quit bosses. But the thing about kids is they can't quit their family. Yeah, they didn't ask to be born. They can't quit their family. And they're not asking, you know what I mean? They they cannot pay you back anything. Mm. And if you make your kid feel like they need to repay you, it's just wrong. It is. Absolutely. Um, I'm guilty of that. You know, I can recall a time where I was picking up my daughter and I was picking her up and I was having car trouble or whatever. And I got upset and I started right away mouthing off. Well, if I had just went home, I wouldn't have this problem. I could have been home already. And the car would have been messing up mm -hmm. at the house. Not, you know what I mean? Not here because I came out of my way to pick you up. And now that message is being sent to her that, hey guess what? I'm not worthy. Mm -hmm. I'm not cherished. Mm -hmm. You know? Yep. This car is more important than me. Yes. Yes. And you never want, if you're having problems with your kid, like mm -hmm. dealing with suicidal thoughts and stuff like that, that you might be sending out some subliminal messages that mm. your life would be better without them. And that's not a good thing. And usually that is rooted in selfishness. That's a crazy part. Because parenting is the inconeability, and I used to say this a lot, and I forgot about it, but now that we're talking about it, it came back, right? <laughs> um, man, parenting really shows you how selfish you are. It does, and that's why people get angry with their kids. Yeah. Because instead of looking at themselves and saying, oh, you know, maybe I shouldn't be so selfish. Is being on the phone really that important? Is my truck really that important? You need to, you know, really look at what your kid needs and what you owe to them. You know what I mean? But yeah. instead, what happens is parents start being angry with their kids mm -hmm. and not holding them account themselves accountable for the way they're treating their kids. And they're start developing this like contempt towards their children. Oof. And I hate to say that, but I mean, there are parents out there that don't like some of their children or they favor one certain child or, you know, there's, if you have those types of dynamics in your, in your mm -hmm. family where you're favoring certain kids and you have contempt towards mm -hmm. another kid, you know, that there's something going on inside yourself. Absolutely. And you usually see that with strong-willed kids, you know, it's, it's a pleasure to, to have a child that does everything you ask them to do, mm -hmm. right? doesn't misbehave, does their homework, doesn't backtalk, everything. But it's those strong-willed kids, you know. And <clears throat> any parent who's ever disciplined or or has raised a strong-willed child, you know, if you're honest with yourself, you can say, so there's some days you're like, man, why do I have this kid? I mean, it would be life would be so much easier if I just had this other kid who did everything that I asked, right? At that moment, we need to start noticing and seeing that that strong-willed ch child is a natural born leader mm -hmm. and that's what the world needs today yes we need those little kids that are natural born leaders because not everybody's a leader but these children are the ones who are raised or who are who have been born to question authority to ask the questions why the reason why behind things mm -hmm. you know and that's what they're doing they in their minds they don't understand it's not making sense to them why is daddy asking me to do this? This doesn't make sense. I just did this here or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they're questioning because that's what got placed inside them. And then we take offense to that. Get upset, flip out, get mad, wish they were never born. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And it's true. I mean, as yeah. it, harsh as it may sound, I mean, that's, that's what's going on through a lot of people's minds. Yeah. At yeah. that moment. Definitely. You know I, mean? I know a lot of moms feel... <clears throat> you know, very stressed out about motherhood. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that the father 
and mother are not on the same page Mm -hmm. the dad doesn't really want to discipline or that when the dad does discipline he does it way over the top or wrong and so the mom takes it into her hands and says okay you don't know how to do do it yeah so i'm gonna take over because i need to protect my children but you know well that goes back to that yeah you know, messing things up too, because maybe she's not going to do the disciplines that are correct because she feels guilty. Or maybe she's, you know, disciplining and she's angry now and she's frustrated. So she's disciplining out of frustration. She's not able to teach her, her kids because her husband's not being a partner and being a leader and leading in, in his role, you know? Well, that usually happens when a husband negates his role. Yeah. He's the main disciplinary. Yeah. Right. And when he steps out of the picture because he feels that mom does it best or he just doesn't feel comfortable doing it or whatever, or he's being spiritually lazy, Mm -hmm. right? Or he's doing it mean. Or he's doing it mean because he's tired because he just worked 24 Mm -hmm. hours straight, right? Mom's been with those kids those 24 hours and then some. Yeah. She's about ready to pull her hair out. Kids are running amok. Father comes in. He's extremely tired. He jumps in the middle of it, thinking he's going to be the knight in shining armor to to save mama. Starts yelling at the kids, you will not speak to my wife a certain way or whatever. Mm -hmm. Does it completely wrong out of anger. And now what he thought was a good thing, a positive thing, coming to his wife's saving grace, turns into her being upset with him because he blew it out of proportion. Yeah. And then that's confusing. And then that starts that little rift that the enemy needs to start the separation between husband and wife because now father's thinking he's doing a good job expecting some nookie after that one yeah right? but instead he's greeted with mama being upset with him because he yelled at the kids yeah or right? if dad comes in and he just right out the gates he doesn't adhere to any type of training he just goes right into punishments okay give me your phone blah blah, blah all this stuff and then mom behind their back Oof. gives, gives them the, back. the kid the phone back because, you know, she needs to talk to her kid during school or whatever and make sure she can pick them up and all those things. Those things can be very confusing. Then the kids know that they can hit, hit one parent against the other. Oh, and kids know how to manipulate. For they sure. do. Kids will find those weak spots in the marriage. That's why it's important to have that united front, right? Very important. That's why it goes back to what we said earlier in the in the podcast. Write down your disciplines. Write down your rules. Come together as a husband and wife. Discuss it. Put it on a chalkboard. That way, when a kid makes a, a breaks a rule, no questions asked. Because you broke this rule, this is your discipline. And it could be simple as you're going to vacuum all the carpets. You're going to uh, bring down all the trash. Mm-hmm. That's your discipline. Today, you wash windows. Yeah, you'll do dishes or you need two disciplines because you you're not, you know, you're throwing a fit while you're doing this discipline. So we're going to add another discipline. So now you're going to do the dishes and you're going to make your bed and clean your room. Yes, or, exactly. you know what I mean? One of the big things that parents always say, well, what's the difference between them doing chores and discipline? It's not. It's the same thing. Chores are training. It's the same thing with disciplines. It's just training. We're training our children Mm -hmm. and we're showing them that, hey, because you didn't adhere to the rules, you need more training in this area. Not to take offense to it, but just look, you're acting like this. You know the rules. You broke the rules. This is how you're going to have to repay. Mm -hmm. This is what you got to pay. And if you don't want to adhere to the disciplines, then you go into scourging, which is punishment, punishment where you take away. Okay, you're. You don't want to do any of the trainings, then your life ends. You don't get to go to practice. You don't get to go and do the things you enjoy. You can't go hang out with your friends. You're giving me your phone, et cetera, things like that. Yes. But um, man, once they start adhering to the disciplines, it's nice because your house is clean. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and it works. I mean, I, I they know when they mess up. Right? Yeah. Uh, one of the big things I tell them now is poor choice. Yeah. Not get upset like I used to. Yeah. Not say, wait, what are you doing? I can't believe you did that. You're a numbskull or whatever. No, none of that. Yeah. Just simply 
poor choice. Yep. This is what you have to do now. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the last point I want to hit on is negative influence. Okay. And that's talking about how hypocrisy within a family can also serve as a negative influence on our children. Uh, as us as parents, right, when we engage in hypocritical behavior, right, where we're telling our children, uh, don't yell at your 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 sibling or whatever, and then we're yelling at the sibling and stuff like that, or we're being unkind when we're telling them to be kind to somebody, mm -hmm. right, or even being dishonest. I mean, I don't know how many times I've had my daughter in the vehicle and I ran a stop sign. I did a California stop and then she's, and then I'm telling her that she must stop when she's driving for three seconds. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's as little as that is, it's, it's, it's having a negative influence on them. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause it's showing that I'm a hypocrite. Yeah. Okay. So we don't want to further contribute to any kind of rebellious behaviors with them. So we need to have ourselves under control. We need to not be hypocritical. Mm -hmm. Right. That way they can't justify doing the same thing as what we're doing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So basically clean yourself up first mm -hmm. and you, <laughs> <laughs> your kids will start acting better, honestly. Now for fathers. Okay. Now we discussed how our parents in general, we discussed how our influence in the home cannot be underestimated. Right. There's several ways that we could put these actions in alignment with the words that we are speaking, okay? One of them is to, when we're at home, make sure you're available to your children, okay? When you're available to them, it shows them that they are valuable to you. And what is it, like 80% of communication is nonverbal? Nonverbal, yeah. So they know if you are approachable or not. Exactly. You know, don't be that guy who has us, you know face on that can you know peel the paint off the side of a building or <laughs> all hanging face all freaking disgruntled and bugged and pissed off and mumbling to yourself no they're not going to want to come to you yeah you know i'm guilty of that i i know that my kids will pass me to get to my my wife to ask her a question sometimes oh every time we'll be in the car yeah. mom mom and i'm right there i'll be on the phone mom and dave you're you're sitting right next. and i'll even have to be like i'm right here your mom's busy what do you need i'll help you you know <laughs> and, and that's just years of me looking a certain way okay so i need to work on that and i'm big enough to say that right now the second part is know your children's interests how many of you know what your favorite your child's favorite color is their favorite toy their favorite hobbies right know their interests and be interested in doing those interests with them. Yes, exactly. Anytime a kid feels like they're part of the family and they're like an integral part of the family, uh, they're just going to act so much better. Mm. When they're when they feel like they're on the outskirts, like you're always telling them, get out of my room or get out of here. Or, you know, don't talk. I don't want to hear your opinion. When they feel like they're part of of the family, there's going to be a lot less rebellion as well. I actually watched this video mm. on teenagers because I was like nervous about <laughs> having teenagers because I knew what I did as a teenager and I didn't want to go through that. And they interviewed a ton of teenagers and uh, the ones that did not rebel against their family said that they all said they felt like they were an integral part of the family. Their parents cared about their thoughts, cared about their interests and, you know, had a relationship with them. Mm. I could have said it better myself, babe. Number three, pursue your kids with intentionality. That's one of the things we always talk about on the show, Dad. Be intentional. Well, you need to pursue your kids with that same intentionality, right? Whether you be a tradesman in the trade, trying to uh, do craftsmanship and everything you do, well, you need to have that same craftsmanship, like a good friend of mine talked about on the last podcast. Bring that craftsmanship back home with you. Be intentional with your children. Okay, pursue them, you know, chase after them. Cause there's gonna be a time they're gonna want nothing to do with you. Yeah. Okay. And last but not least, how are you involved in the discipline? That is super critical fathers. We talked about that before our spouses were never made to carry on the discipline by themselves. Okay. It's like, it's like having an open, an open bank transformer. Okay. You have a closed bank, you lose a pot, 
It's now operating at 86.6% efficiency, okay? It's not meant to operate like that. It can, but eventually it's going to burn out. So when our wives are at home and we're at work, they're going to carry out the disciplines at the home that we have joined together and created and put up, right? They're going to do that. But they cannot sustain that by themselves. If you get in the habit of, of letting them deal with the discipline, because guess what? I'm lazy. I'm tired. I work 24 hours straight. It's not going to go good. You're going to build resentment in her. And ultimately, that resentment is going to be felt throughout the family, the family dynamic. Yeah, okay. and definitely if your wife is telling you that she'll handle it, that's a big clue that she views that the way you discipline is unsafe. Wow. Yeah. So once again, thank you guys for joining us. I hope this episode just brings some light to some of the struggles you might be dealing with and hypocrisy and how it breeds rebellion. Um, we have the show up dad, uh, group chat that we have on Facebook. If you guys are interested in joining that, we have a platform where our fathers can come and just share and get insight on how to be a better father, how to be a better husband. It's all men on there. Okay. And also we are a nonprofit organization. Okay. If you like the t-shirts that we have, the dialed in dad's crew, all the different stuff that we have, all proceeds go to our foundation and helping us create this atmosphere, this dynamic, this training for you guys. It's all free. We are a nonprofit organization. So yeah. And if you are interested in the parenting books, reach yes. out to us and we will send you over a free PDF for, for you to download uh, for you and your spouse to work through. And we also offer coaching um, for those books. Yes, we do. We offer free coaching for those books. So hit us up, uh, DM us if you like. And once again, we're here for you. We're praying for you guys' families. Keep doing what you guys are doing. Thank you.